Vinyl is making a comeback, and a whole new generation is discovering the magic that lies within the grooves. And they too will be collecting all kinds of music, such as classical, pop rock, heavy metal, country, comedy, and some of us like collecting soundtracks. Sure, there's movie tunes and there's also Broadway shows, but today we'll be looking at TV soundtracks. Now, we won't be exploring CDs, cassettes, 8-tracks, MP3s. We will be speaking strictly for the record. Back before there was VHS, DVDs, Blu-rays, or computers, the only way one could revisit their favorite shows or hear their catchy theme songs was to listen to it on 45s or LPs. Indeed, there were lots of compilation theme records, but for those who needed the real music score, the one that sounded exactly as the theme that was on TV, you had to buy the original music. Now you could just go buy the 45 and listen to the theme over and over again, but some of us wanted to hear all that background music too. You know, the stuff that our heroes on the screen had behind them. Here is a quick look at just a few of the TV soundtracks from the collection of Robert Eistridge. These records are mostly from the 50s and 60s, with a couple from the late 80s, right before the botched attempt to kill the LP. Like a rare record of Jamie McFeeders, a show that starred a young Kurt Russell. TV soundtracks are where a lot of composers got their start. Peter Gunn gave its audience a jazzy score and helped open the doors for Henry Mancini. Here, the catchy tune of Rawhide and other songs sung by Frankie Lane was arranged and conducted by Johnny Williams. That's right, the Lost in Space theme song composer, he went on to create the scores for Jaws, Star Wars, Indiana Jones, and Harry Potter. One of the most popular things was Mission Impossible, which is still getting the mileage off the Tom Cruise movies. Lalo Sheffrin also scored Mannix, Medical Center, and many film scores like Bullet, Dirty Harry, and Rush Hour. TV shows that were big hits with cool themes had many albums, and even they had spin-offs, with Stephanie Powers before the show Heart to Heart. When Batman hit the scene, hardcore fans wanted both Neil Hefty's record, since he created the song, and Nelson Riddle's record, because he supplied all of the background music for the dynamic duo. The Batman theme song inspired many copycat versions and storytellers to produce records. And you even see here a comedy team called Alan and Rossi who tried their hand at making a parody hoping to cash in on the Bat craze. One of the most sought after TV records is the rare soundtrack to Green Hornet, a show that starred Van Williams and Bruce Lee, which lasted one season. Although it wasn't as popular as Batman, it still attracted the copycats. It reintroduced the radio shows, and it also gave the comedy team, Alan and Rossi, well, they gave it another go again. Finally, some shows released albums with not only the theme song, but with the cast singing songs. You finally got to hear the words to the Andy Griffith show, you know, the whistling theme? and the words to Hogan's Heroes as the cast sang it along with the other songs from World War II. Where was Colonel Hogan? Well, he was with Schultz and Klink on another album with his version of the theme. Jim Neighbors had a wonderful deep voice and released many records, but he did this whole album singing in his Gomer country voice. Here's some rare songs from the Honeymooners and delightful tunes from the entire cast of Beverly Hillbillies singing in character. Where else would you get the chance to hear Sally Field sing? Or Christmas Wishes from the Brady Kids. And this is all right from the horse's mouth. And that's from the original TV soundtrack, Mr. Ed. So from Mr. Ed Word Senek, let me tell you that if it's rock, country, classical, if it sounds good, it's a goodbye. And with that, goodbye. <laughs>